Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer from All Saints Church, a Lutheran Episcopal community in Washington Courthouse, Ohio, and St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Hillsboro, Ohio, for the commemoration or minor feast, lesser feast, of Sarah, Theodora, and Syncletica of Egypt, Desert Mothers. Sarah, Theodora, and Syncletica, and Syncletica are the three desert mothers, or Amas, whose sayings are included in the 5th century Apophthegmata um, Patrum, the sayings of the fathers of the desert. The collection includes 47 sayings attributed to these three women. It is related that Amasara lived beside the beautiful river for 60 years, yet never lifted her eyes in distraction from prayer to look at it. She said, If I prayed God that all men should approve of my conduct, I should find myself a penitent at the door of each one. But I shall rather pray that my heart may be, made, may be pure toward all. Monks often came to visit her. On one occasion, some monks came to her claiming to be from the highly regarded community of, of um, Cetus, or Skedus, Skedus, and she offered them a basket of fruit from which they took the, the rotten fruit and left the good for her to eat. She then said to them, You are true monks of Skedus. Another time, some elderly monks, considered to be great anchorites, came to her hoping to humiliate her and shame her. They came to her and said, be careful not to become conceited, because great anchorites are coming to see you, a mere woman. Amasera reply, only replied, According to nature I am a woman, but not according to my thoughts. It is I who am a man, and you who are a woman. Amma Theodora was the wife of a Roman tribune. After his death, um, but after his death retired to the desert to live an ascetic life. She was consulted by many monks for her wisdom on prayer. According to one of her teachings, those who set their minds to pray are often overcome with distraction, and distraction, depression, faint-heartedness, or headaches. But she relates the story of how one monk, every time he felt too ill to pray, declared, Clearly I am near death, and so I should get up and pray right now before I die. In this way, he resisted temptation. Yet Amma Theodora also stressed that temptations can only be overcome through humility rather than through asceticism. For even the demons fast and keep vigil and live in desert places, but they do not have humility. Amma Syncletica lived a life of asceticism um, in a tomb in Alexandria. She wrote, if you, write, if you find yourself in a place, do not forsake it to go to another place, for that will harm you a great deal. Just a, as a bird who abandons the eggs she was sitting on prevents them from hatching, so a monastic grows cold and her faith dies when she wanders from one place to another. She also taught that it was possible to live a spiritual life within secular society, not only as a monk or a nun. There are many who live in the desert, yet behave as though they were in a town, and they are wasting their time. It is possible to be monastic in one's mind while living in a crowd. It is also to be possible for a monastic to live in a crowd amidst her own thoughts. All three of these had some very interesting things to say. Very insightful and in some ways quite contrary to to their time i love i love the one responding to the um to the monks who who thought they were so much better than her because they were men and she was a woman <laughs> and, and pointed out pointing out that there's a very big difference between outward form and inward form and and the attitudes that you are attributing to women as she was saying, telling these monks, are the attitudes that you yourselves hold 
therefore inside you are the women, and I am the man. It could also be seen as an early commentary on on um, the fact that that. the way we self-identify with gender is has been recognized for millennia to not necessarily line up with how we identify uh, how we are identified externally we have two examples now that in 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 what we've done in morning prayer in these commemorations that that hint at um non-binary gender first we had the uh the young woman who who um after being a prostitute lived as a male monk for the rest of her life so effectively that her fa own father didn't recognize her um, and then we have this desert mother um, pointing out that our outward appearance doesn't necessarily match our inward understanding of our own gender or how our our role the gender roles that we fulfill don't necessarily match our biological sex well let us prepare for worship behold the dwelling of god is with mankind he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and god himself will be with them and be their God. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. To us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? I'm just reading the uh, the Latin. I, the Psalms are all titled with with their first words in Latin. Quare fremuerunt gentes, and and I love that word fremuerunt, which means be in an uproar. And gentes is more peoples. But when when they used peoples, it was a, you know, a people is a nation, or not in our modern understanding of nations. This is some place where we get mixed up. It's not necessarily about physical boundaries, borders. Um, a nation was a group of people who identified together. And nations often overlapped, and the borders were fluid um, or very indistinct. Our modern understanding of, of borders actually causes all kinds of problems. Um, that doesn't mean that the fluid version didn't cause problems, too. The fluid version is what led to what's going on right now in the Middle East with Israel and Palestine and Lebanon um, because all of these borders were very indistinct and these people overlapped they identified as individual peoples but they coexisted to a certain extent they never liked each other in fact they were often fighting each other but the idea that that your your border ends here 
is far less distinct. Um, and often you got much more blending in the countrysides. The cities were typically of one nation or another, or one peoples or another. Um, but the people in between, far less so. That's how you have I mean, some of the some of the um, intercultural marriages listed biblically are because these people were in the same place. It wasn't that they had to travel to another country in order to find them. They were all over the place. They were a different people. They were a different nation, but they weren't a different location. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples utter em mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed? Let us break their yoke and the yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord, he said to me. You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow before him, lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they who take refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia! To us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. This is an interesting psalm in another way. Um, because it's in some ways very clearly about David um, who is God's anointed uh, Christus just means anointed um, he's the one um, set by God upon his holy hill of Zion he's the king in Jerusalem um, where the temple is on the whole, on the the temple and the palace, both on the on the high hills, um, put there by God, uh, chosen. Um, we've read about the choosing of David. Um, this is, and and talking about him as um, crushing with uh, with an iron rod. David was a king in time of war, a very successful general of his people. Um, and yet it also is seen as a messianic poem, but a uh, psalm, particularly you know, speaking of the coming of Jesus Christ, um, another anointed who will, who will be set um, upon that highest place and rule with God. Um, but it's... There are elements of both and, and things that don't fit with both of them as well. It fits better with David than it does with Jesus. But we also see that line, you are my son, this day have I begotten you. That's repeated in, um, is it Mark, um, at Jesus' baptism. Um, and 
in uh, and it's a point it's pointing at a different um, Christology than the other um, Gospels in that Jesus was not born the Son of God he became the Son of God um, at his baptism at his anointing um, so there there is there were two distinct streams of understanding of of Jesus as the Son of God that were coexisting shortly after Jesus life and they're both included in the Bible and one has clearly um, one in the in the uh, in the courts of theology and that is that Jesus was born the Son of God but <laughs> we have a gospel that actually speaks very differently that does not agree with that that is biblical and accepted as God's truth and yet it contradicts what a lovely world we live in what a lovely faith we have I actually like it that it's not necessarily clear A reading from uh, the letter to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Um, stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and in every prayer and supplication. To that end, alert and always be, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Here ends the reading. This is an incredible prayer, and not just and it's it's a prayer as a as a faith leader um, that this is the community that I wish you to be and I pray that that you will support me in this leadership so that we can get there and that that the faith that I speak of may be true and accurately representing God not just coming from the depths of my personal desires but this whole idea of the armor of God um, has been so, so misused. And here it's, it's spoken of so eloquently and laid out that this, this is not war as we know it. It can't be. This is the peace, the peacemakers war meaning that it, it's it's not about taking up arms against each other even in defense of somebody um, to a large part it's a it's a war of, of of words and peaceful actions showing a different way um, 
being willing to take what comes with it. Martyrdom comes from this. Whether it's white martyrdom where you're just ostracized or it's full martyrdom where you end up dead. It's standing up for what you believe and trusting that God is with you. Um, it's, it's about seeking the truth to the extent that you're willing to let go of, of your preconceived notions. You know, fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Um, it speaks to the fact that before we do that, we contain all kinds of untruths. So seeking the truth and being devoted to truth um, the breastplate of righteousness um, trying to always be right with God and using that um, to keep ourselves in this line as shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace so the footwear is very open um, but it's it's about footwear which will actually make you comfortable um, and remind you that I mean, think about you know when you wear shoes if you wear shoes that pinch um, it tends to make you irritable and angry because you're always uncomfortable. Um, if you're proclaiming the gospel of peace, so the good news of peace, you have to be at peace. So what shoes would you wear that make you personally be at peace? Not ones typically that are designed for fashion because they're often not very comfortable. With all of these, take the shield of faith, which will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. We will be assailed by those who are trying to shut us down. Have faith. God is with you. The helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. That that knowledge that, yeah, we're going to screw up. God loves us anyway. We are forgiven. We are called to continue. We are called to recognize when we screw up and fix it. That's the helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit. When the spirit is strong with us, it shines out and infects. So the sword of the spirit is, is about conversion, but it's not about conversion by force. It's about conversion by presence and and unrelenting good news. So the sword of the spirit is that truth and 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 peace radiating from us that that people can't help but respond to. And that sword of the spirit is the word of God. So is the the helmet of salvation. Those two together are the word of God. That image of, of holy war, which in Arabic is jihad, um, is, is so incredible. And in the Quran, there are similar descriptions of what jihad is. It's, it's this. This is holy war. It's about 
doing everything we can with all we know and all we are to bring peace and good news and salvation. Wow. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Fix our hearts on you, O God, in pure devotion, that aided by the example of your servants, Sarah, Theodora, and Sincletica, the vain pursuits of this world may have no hold upon us, and that by consuming the consuming fire of your Spirit we may be changed into the image and likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the same Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you and I will see you hopefully online on Sunday. I'm still trying to get the computer fixed. Um, if not, I will see you online on um, Tuesday. This has been Morning Prayer for the um, commemoration or lesser feast of Sarah, Theodora, and Sincletica of Egypt, uh, Desert Mothers, from All Saints Church, a Lutheran Episcopal community in Washington Courthouse, Ohio, and St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Hillsboro, Ohio. Thank you for joining us.